This generalizes to more predictors. So suppose I have a data set with an equal to three, but suppose now that there's actually two predictor variables. So I've got Q1, X1, and Y1 for the first person, Q1, Q2, X2, and Y2 for the second person. And the third person's variables are equal to some number of Q3, some number X3, and some number Y. Y3. So again, Y is the outcome variable and Y1, Y2, Y3 are the values of the outcome variable for the, for the three people. X is some predictor, X1, X2, X3 are the values of X for the three people in my data set. Q1, Q is some variable, so Q1, Q2, Q3 are the values of Q for people in my data set. And suppose that my model is going to be that the mean of Y given X and also Q is going to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times X plus beta two times Q. Suppose that's what my model is gonna be. Then I can write this down. Okay, well, if the residuals were gonna be as small as possible, right? Let's see, I could have Y1 equal to beta zero plus beta one times X1 plus beta two times Q1. Y2 is equal to beta zero plus beta one times X2 plus beta two times Q2. Again, I'm just making one equation for each person to see on the right side is showing me what I would get if I plug in each person's predictors into the model. And the right and the left side is showing me that person's actual outcome value. So now I have three equations because there's three people in the data set, but I've set this up. So I also have three unknowns. When you solve for three equations, three unknowns, you can find all the parameter estimates. such that the residuals are zero. Let's make that more legible. So the residuals are zero, it's a little better, which implies that R squared is equal to one. Now this is vast overfitting, right? I don't actually believe that if someone new entered the model who had Q equal to five and X equals to four, that they should have exactly the same Y value as one of these three people who has that Q and that X, right? I wanna generalize over my data values um, to give a prediction that takes into account all the information uh, that I have, not just assume um, that anyone new entering the data set will have exactly the same outcome value as someone who had their exact same predictors. So ideally, I have actually more data points than parameters to estimate, right? I'd rather have 100, N equals 100, and then just intercept and slope. That would be better. In fact, what I'd prefer is to have many more data points than parameters to estimate. Because remember the number of equations in the previous slide is equal to the number of data points. So then you'll have many, many more equations than unknowns, and you won't be able to solve those equations exactly, but that's a good thing because then you'll have some residuals. You'll be able to estimate the residual variance and you won't be overfitting. So that's actually a good thing. Here's our next fact about R squared. I actually wanna draw it and then have you tell me what you think is gonna happen. So what I'm interested in is what happens to R squared when you consider a subset of your predictors. I wanna see what happens. Let me draw a picture here. So here's my X variable, here's my Y variable. Suppose I have some data that looks like this. Okay. And suppose I looked at this and I calculated the correlation, right? and therefore I calculated R squared, right? So I have some R squared value, and I'll just say R squared is pretty high, right? Because R squared is just correlation. Correlation looks pretty strong here, so R squared will be big. In other words, most of the reason that Y varies, like Y is not always equal to the same number here, right? Most of the reason that Y varies is because Y is related to X and X varies. Okay, um, so that's what we mean by, by high R squared. The reason that there's variability in Y is that um, Y is related to X, not just because of residuals. So suppose I do this and then I say, but you know what? 
um, I'm actually only interested in this region of X. Um, so for example, um, maybe this is the correlation between um, uh, like student pe people's income the first year they graduate from college and then people's income 10 years after they graduate from college. And maybe I'm trying to focus on um, the subset of people who have some like particular major and they tend to make money um, right out of college in this range. Or maybe I'm, I'm particularly focusing on people who get jobs in a certain field right out of college and, and their incomes are in that range. So I'm interested now in the subset of people in this little box that I just drew. So my question is, when I zoom in in this way, focus on a subset of the data based on X, what's gonna happen to R squared? 